So let's start from uh, from thinking back to this earlier northern meeting that we had a few years ago in Reykjavik when we were witnessing a rather important uh, meeting I understand when when you and the ministry signed an agreement of kind which guaranteed you also uh, funding what happened after that um, what happened was the economic crisis of course which made it uh, more difficult to uh, to fund these kinds of uh, of uh, operations and uh, NGOs really felt that but um, now we hope we are in a way uh, back and uh, track so to say but um, at the same time even though funding was cut down for a while I think um, the um, the uh, existence of NGOs in alcohol and health policy and in prevention um, become became more acknowledged than before. So this may be a contradiction, but at the same time, I think we our po position has become uh, stronger in 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 that sense. So what you are saying is that. Um Although uh, for NGOs like us, we tend to think that if we lose funding, that means also that alcohol policy is cut from the priorities, but it doesn't mm. have to be like that. All no, no I, I think we should be careful to, to put this in, 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 in context, so to say. Of course, the more money we have in general, we, the stronger we can be, it means we can invest more time and energy in this but but um, in regard of of um, of uh, governmental support it it doesn't have to mean even though know, they are cutting down funds that they are they are cutting us uh, from the whole issue somewhat when we think also uh, on northern members we are hearing from here and there that uh, member organizations in different countries are experiencing financial problems and, and also government funding is taken away. Mm. Do you still see that uh, it might be a shift even in the Nordic countries somewhat? Um, I really don't know in, 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 in a Nordic context but if I look at in my own country's context. I see at the same time, time, time we have been losing funding. Uh, schools have been forced to, to cut down. All uh, fields have been forced to cut down uh, their expenses and, and, and uh, live with, it, with this facts, to live with this situation that the, the financial crisis uh, created. But I think um, uh, <clears throat> uh, NGOs uh, probably must uh, acknowledge this this situation, and one of one of their answers could be to strengthen their cooperation uh, in in all possible aspects, and and um, through that cooperation. Um, be able to show their strength because I think um, politicians in all the Nordic countries they are quite well aware of the possibilities of, of NGOs and the importance of NGOs for for the social um, well-being and social development. But still when we, when we think of for instance prevention when when government is in crisis it cuts it cuts down costs from from the areas where it probably sees that uh, that it doesn't uh, feel it doesn't hurt that much. Um, is prevention work, school work, youth work, and so on? Uh, does that show that that there is no uh, value seen in that work as much as we would like to uh, it to be? Of course, that's always debatable. Well, what is more important and 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 uh, 
and this of course it's often so that you are you are cutting down in one area but then you get the higher costs in in, in, in instead in other areas and but it's, it's not a simple uh, scene at all because uh, when you don't have the money you have to do something about it and it's often uh, in those areas where are not where legislation is not uh, so uh, uh, strong or these are not um, classified as necessity for for um, for a society for a country uh, like communication and, and such things then often these are the first ones to to go out and um, as a follower of, of prevention and that ideology, I don't approve with that, but I, I, I can understand and also um, being a part of that uh, system, I, I've also been in the same situation as a, as a, as a um, uh, uh, municipality uh, participant uh, that, uh, that you have to cut down and, and of course you try to take a little bit from, from all uh, issues, but sometimes uh, the issues are so weak that even a small bit taken away will mean that they are they have uh, they uh, have serious problems. How do you see the future now for your organization? Do you do you feel the situation stable? Um, it's not stable, but I think that we can and we have experienced more um, acknowledgement and more support for for what we are doing so i think um, when um, the government and the parliament and the whole system is uh, is approving our part our our role the the, the more the stronger we get uh, or stronger we become and um, so I have a feeling that, and I think it's not only for um, for Iceland, but for at least Nordic and European countries, uh, the role of NGOs, the role of the grassroots, uh, is um, uh, more and more acknowledged, and and uh, we can see it in in um, for international bodies like the European Union, the WHO, and and such. Um, uh, big unions that they are they are asking for participation from the NGOs side because of course we are uh, all the time we are talking about uh, people's lives we are talking about changing people's lives and it cannot only happen from above it must also be taken care of um, at lower levels at the, where, where people are uh, and uh, NGOs and uh, the the, uh, the lives of organizations are, are a big part of most people. Let's take just for, for, uh, for an example the uh, sports where most kids, most young people participate and a lot of other youth uh, organizations, they are affecting uh, a vast majority of, of homes, at least in the Nordic countries. So um, it's uh, in their interest that these organizations are strong and, and they're active and they have a role not only um, to amuse the kids but also to to make some or and some to have some influence in, in their lives and, and for the future.